So we continue working on positional chess and this time we'll see a game played between two former world champions, Garry Kasparov against Tigran Petrosian. So uh, let's get started. Kasparov opens the game with d4, knight f6, c4, e6. We've seen this move order a lot through this course. Knight f3. And here black plays bishop b4 check. We know this is the Bogo Indian and this is not the only option for black. He can also play b6, which is Queen's Indian. And if he plays d5, he is likely to transpose to a queen's gambit declined, knight c3. Here bishop e7 would be an orthodox. Bishop b4 is a Ragusin variation. c6 is a semi-slav. a6 system it doesn't have a name, but I know it's pretty solid. c5 is the Tarrash. And d takes c4 is the Vienna variation. As you can see, this move order is quite flexible for black. So Petrosian plays bishop b4 check, bishop d2. I like covering this check with my bishop. Knight bd2 has some merits as well. We are trying to play a3. And by the way, since we haven't played knight c3, we are not allowing black to take, thus destroying our pawn chain. So knight bd2 is possible as well. The only issue we have when we play knight bd2 is that we can no longer place our knight on the right square, which is c3. Uh, of course, both uh, moves, knight bd2 or bishop d2, are theory. I like bishop d2, and black plays queen e7. Nowadays, I think bishop takes d2 is more popular and, and against queen takes. White uh, doesn't take on d2 with the knight, he wants to play knight c3. Black can play d5. If I recall correctly, this was played by Carson a few times as black, and I have the feeling black is pretty close to equalizing. So, bishop d2, queen e7 is another system for black. Uh, now, if we take the bishop on b4, then queen takes b4, and no matter what we play, we'll lose the pawn as white. Knight c3. And these two guys are hanging. Queen b2. He's got queen takes c4, and knight bd2. Queen takes b2 is there. So, we are not taking on b4. What we'll play is defianketo and uh, when I play d4 in almost every single line, I like playing like this as white because we put a lot of pressure, long term pressure, on um, black's queen side. So he decides to take. Queen takes d2. I think this retake is very important. Knight b takes d2. This is also possible. But uh, we'll need the knight on c3. In order to understand this, um, you probably need to see a lot of games, because at first glance it's impossible to tell uh, the knight on d2 is not well placed. But let us say he plays a move like d6, he's likely to play e5 at some point. He'll place all his pawns on dark squares, that is making his bishop c8 a good bishop. And if we have the knight on d2, we don't have the chances we would have if we have the knight on c3. So that is why against uh, bishop takes d2, we take with the queen. This is much better. We are still in time to play knight c3, and we don't have to be scared of knight e4, because here we can play the simple queen c2, and, well, maybe queen b4 is an idea, although he's not achieving much by playing this. We can even play a move like knight fd2, knight takes, and by doing this maneuver, 
he's doing us a big favor because now that defender of the king side is gone development wise he is down we have very good pieces and we also have a better center so black is not achieving much with this aggressive play if he plays knight e4 so he castles and bishop here we can also play knight c3 i mean this would be logical because we stop knight e4 and then we can play bishop g2 next however kasparov understands that knight e4 is not a threat let's check this move once more we can play queen c2 this would be the standard reaction if f5 i can just castle d6 and if we compare this position with a stone wall the knight on e4 doesn't have any support i can easily play a move like knight c3 he has to take and i believe that sooner or later this diagonal uh, is going to be powerful i mean i also feel i'm playing e4 soon so black doesn't have any control of the e4 square compared to a stone wall or a traditional nimso this is different and if he plays a move like d5 we are playing stone wall but he's missing his dark squares bishop he doesn't have the bishop on d6 nor e7 we know bishop c8 is kind of a bad bishop and i'm tempted to play stuff like e3 and start maneuvering with my knights and one day i'll advance with f3 as well kicking that knight out of e4 not to mention in these structures uh, my bishop is very good i mean all my pawns are on dark squares so white doesn't have much to worry about here so gary plays this bishop g2 as we said knight e4 is not a threat so black decides to play d5 you probably saw the first uh, video of this course and um, the game was uh, let me recall quickly it was Lothier against Karpov and we saw Queen's Gambit declined if you remember that game you'll realize this structure is kind of similar we have uh, that position is about equal but uh, the big difference is we have a nice bishop Whereas Black's bishop on c8 is not doing good. In fact, he has issues because we haven't taken on d5. I mean, if we played this as white, this would be a huge positional mistake because then he gets uh, his bishop out in a flash. So, as white, we had to play something else. I mean, there's no chance we take on d5 that would be helping black so we can protect the c4 pawn i mean i would consider a move like knight a3 but unfortunately this knight a3 has an issue we still have the king on e1 so now a move like knight e4 and queen b4 check this might be annoying so let us just castle and if he takes on c4 we know we can easily get that pawn back as usually happens in the catalan variation our bishop on g2 is too powerful so d takes c4 is not an issue petrosian takes anyway well if he doesn't take i mean i would have played a move like rook d8 if i were black trying to place the rook on the same file as my queen I, I still feel white has a net. At some point I, I can move my queen from d1. I can also try a place in my rooks on d1 and c1. And I don't see a threat for black. The only uh, free move I see is playing something like c5. And this is risky for black as well. Because if he does uh, play a move like c5. I can try opening the entire position and he's lacking development 
all my pieces are outside, whereas black pieces are still on the first rank. So by opening that position, I should have an advantage as white. Okay, Petrosian took on c4, and this is making life easier for us because now we can play the simple knight a3. And this move is much stronger than knight e5. I mean, knight e5, you probably thought about this move, but uh, I mean, the purpose of knight e5 is to take on c4, so is the purpose of knight a3. But I prefer having my knight in this uh, key square guarding the king side. When I play knight a3, I also develop a piece. So this move is much, much better than knight e5. Now, and talking about moves, I feel knight e5 might have some issues here because after knight takes c4, he can play c5. I mean, worst scenario, or best scenario, I should say, I end up with an isolated pawn on d4 for no reason. So knight a3 is much, much better. And here black takes his chance to move his c7 pawn before we establish a domination on the c file. It's like this is one of the few positions where he can play c5 without losing material or without losing some positional stuff. So c5. Here we can already consider a couple of moves. I like Playing it simple, I mean, knight takes c4, I feel is too easy. Maybe Kasparov didn't like rook d8. We have to play something like rook fd1. Uh, according to that computer, this is much, much better for white, but uh, from the human point of view, it is not comfortable to have the queen on d2 when your opponent has the rook on d8 and knight c6 is also coming. It looks like queen e3 is the move here. And after all the trades, it smells that white is dominating. Again, this reminds me of the first game we saw Lotier against Karpov. We have a good looking endgame, and black's only issue is uh, the bishop on c8. But this issue is sometimes enough to lose. So. Instead of knight takes c4, in this position, Gary decides to take. I like this because after queen takes c5, we have the simple rook a c1, and as you can see, there's no defense for black. I mean, he cannot protect his c4 pawn. b5 simply loses to a move like knight d4. We attack the rook, we also attack the b5 pawn, so... He's basically dead here. Knight d5, I can grab the b5 pawn. c4 is falling next. Not to mention all the tricks I have on this diagonal. So, rook a c1, knight c6, knight takes c4. This retake is natural. You can argue that uh, a rook takes c4 is playable as well because you win a tempi attacking the queen. That makes sense, but he'll move his queen anyway. I mean, the queen on c5 is a target. And I'm concerned about my knight on a3, which is a bit out of play. So, knight takes c4, it's easier, and now we have serious threats coming. Knight d6 is a possibility, so is knight c5. And as I said, the queen on c5 is not well placed. Considering the threats we have, Petrosian made a huge positional mistake here. Queen e7. It doesn't look uh, that bad for black. I mean, it looks solid, but when you are playing a position like this, being too passive is not a good idea. I mean, rook d8 is better. You attack the queen. Let's say I play something like queen f4. Or even queen here, because I don't mind playing an endgame. I have good pressure on this diagonal plus my rooks, so I don't mind trading queens off. 
I can play something like this, h6, I get my bishop out somehow. Again, I should say this reminds me of the first game, it is quite similar. The only huge difference I see is that in this particular case, we have a stronger bishop. But in this variation, black has a game at least. After queen e7, uh, this should have a punishment, because he's lacking development, he's moving his queen twice, and there's no real way of developing the bishop on c8. So here I suggest you pause the video, try finding white's best continuation. Uh, it is a positional puzzle, I mean, we don't have tactics yet, it is tough because uh, Despite Black's lack of development, he has a solid position, so we'll have to break through somehow. Take your time, pause the video. What I'll do now is a 5-10 seconds pause, and then I'll continue talking. Okay, so after Queen e7, uh, we have to look for candidate moves. I mean, the first move we see is knight d6, I mean, for some reason this looks too obvious, but then rook d8, we have to take the bishop on c8, I mean, otherwise we are likely to lose that knight on d6, and yeah, he takes, by playing this variation, and despite keeping our best bishop, I feel we are doing black a big favor, because that bishop on c8 was useless and suddenly he's got his two rooks out. So there's no way we play this. Um, another candidate move I see is queen d6, and I really like this because we are trading off his best defender, which is queen e7. After this, this is so uncomfortable for black. He cannot move the bishop on c8. Maybe he can try something like this, but this knight on d6 is a pain for for black. I, I see moves like this coming. Maybe he has to play something like knight d5. Still uncomfortable, but let us say black is still in the game. So queen d6 is a huge possibility. Another move, and I, I'm sure you thought about this, rook fd1, we have to consider this. If he plays a move like e5, trying to free his position, we realize he's... Oof, I'm sorry about this, all these arrows. <laughs> okay, yeah, if he tries playing e5 and getting his bishop out, we realize his e5 pawn is too weak. And now a move like queen e3 is probably working. So is queen d6, trading his most important piece. And again he is in trouble because he cannot get his pieces out and it seems like the e5 pawn is weaker. So rook fd1, I feel black has to play something like rook d8 maybe. And yeah, queen e3 maybe takes, takes, I guess knight d5. And white has some pressure. I would try stopping bishop d7, bishop e8, because if he plays that, then he's free in his position, maybe queen b3. Stopping bishop d7, and I feel white has a net here as well. As we can see, white had very good opportunities. Queen d6, rook f d1. Uh, Believe it or not, those are okay, but... <laughs> Kasparov played an even stronger move, knight f e5. In all of my videos, well, not all of them, but most of them, we talk about removing the kingside defender. Well, this time we'll try removing the queenside defender, and we also open this diagonal. By doing this, we also make sure this guy on c8 never gets out. Uh, he has to take, he doesn't have a choice, I mean rook d8, we can start with this move, and his pawn structure on the queen side is a disaster. 
he's likely to lose the c6 pawn actually. Knight e5 is coming next, so he has to take. We play knight takes, and it feels like rook d8 here is the only move for black. However, Petrosian played knight d5. This is like a positional trick. We'll we'll come back to this move soon. Rook d8. I mean, it is the obvious move. However, I can just move my queen. I am tempted to play queen a5 because of the entries on c7 and also because I'm not afraid of a move like b6. I mean, if he does play b6, I can just move my queen and then I have a hole on c6 and I can play knight c6 right here. And he has to resign because after this I can take and then I grab the rook on a8 and if he plays something like queen f8, I mean, he is... Uh, yeah, he's busted here. I imagine moving my knight and taking the rook on a8. And that is the worst scenario. <laughs> so, yeah, rook d8 was probably helping white because queen a5 is an useful move. When he plays knight d5, and by the way, he's moving his knight twice, we don't have to fall in the trap. I mean, if we take... He can play a move like rook d8 and he manages to trade pieces off. And apart from rook d8, he can try this. Even if he loses a pawn, this is a big achievement for black. He gets his bishop out and we give him a lot of counterplay. We don't want to do that, so after knight d5, we play rook fd1. It is great to see how every single piece works. With rook fd1, um, we prepare some e4 at some point, and as usual, black cannot develop his bishop on c8. Well, if he does, we can just take, we play e4, and it's game over. So, he plays knight b6. Here comes another great move by Gary, queen a5. Black is in a complete sux one. Bishop d7 now, we play bishop takes b7, and if he plays a move like f6, we have to point out that when we advance a pawn like this, we weaken our position a lot. Knight c4, knight takes, rook takes. White's advantage is winning already, because there is no way to stop rook c7, we control d8, and b6 is not even possible. We can play queen c3 and rook c7 is coming no matter what. I also have the feeling that when black plays f6, apart from his first rank, his uh, seventh rank is, is weaker now. So knowing all these things, Petrosian plays uh, g6 and okay here we have to finish him off. I mean, this is kind of giving up, giving up because he's not creating threats, he's not developing a piece. It's like he's in Sux one. Uh, before we continue with the game, I'm wondering what happens if Rook d8. This would be a nice uh, puzzle as well. This time we have some tactics going on. So I recommend you pause the video and try finding it. I'll do my 10 seconds pause before continuing. So after rook d8, we have the simple knight c4. We don't even have to take on d8. We can play this, of course, if this we take on d8, and if rook takes, we have rook takes, and it is impossible for black to, to stop our entry on d8. I mean, he can try this knight d5, but here a move like e4 is it's devastating. We can also try taking. Here we have a big reason to do this. Obviously, we don't want this bishop out. We have knight b6, and this is winning as well. It's, it's obvious that here... Uh, 
Black's lack of development is paying off for us. So knight c4 was a tough move. We have to see this. So Petrosian tries this move. Rook d3. I like this move. Also rook d4 was possible. And rook d3 has a trick. Now rook d8. Uh, we saw a position like this uh, just uh, a minute ago. But here rook d8. There's no rook d1 check. So all we can do is deviate the queen from e7. We can play something like queen c5. And after queen takes, rook takes d8. Queen f8 is the only move. Takes, takes, and rook c7. And this is complete domination from white. Here black can easily resign. So going back to rook d3, black is forced to play in knight d5. And if he wants to play something else, he has to play king there. So knight d5. We are not taking that knight. We are not letting this bishop go out. So we play e4. Knight b6. And another move, which is um, something that uh, is part of Kasparov's style. We saw rook f1 a couple of moves ago. Now we see bishop f1. I saw. I see this in uh, Gary's games uh, a lot. Every single piece is participating. Black is in sucks one. He cannot move much. So. We improve our pieces as much as we can. Rook e8. I guess rook d8 runs in, into queen c5 once more. And if he wants to play f6, we are more than happy to play this. And as we discussed in a similar position, there's no way to stop uh, the entry on the 7th rank. So he plays rook e8. We come back to d1. <laughs> That's funny, we have a lot of moves, but here uh, I think Gary wanted to play bishop b5. So rook f8. Petrosian never played f6 in this game. Uh, here, apart from knight c4, which was our reaction to f6 in every single variation, apart from knight c4, we can also consider this move now, because he doesn't have any development. Our rooks should be crashing here. So it, it is late to play f6 now. He plays rook f8. <laughs> He's in a complete waiting strategy. And see how Gary finishes uh, him off. a3. King there. b3. At first glance, it is not easy to understand what is white trying to do. He wants to play a4, move the queen, and then he'll play a5. King there, a4, and then we have the final mistake by black, rook d8. He was never playing this move before because of queen c5, and this is what happened in the game. Queen c5, queen takes, and rook c7, and black has to resign here. This is a complete suit one. What else can he try instead of rook d8? Maybe rook e8 once more. So if he plays this, we can just move our queen. I would play queen d2. I would make it easy. I mean, there's no clear way of stopping a5. If he plays a5 himself, we have queen d4. And apart from our queenside chances, I also see knight there, and we can also mate him. So Petrosian tried rook d8, queen c5, and the game is over. We also see here that bishop f1 was useful because rook takes d1 is not even check. So you see, this was one of the best games I've seen from Gary. First, because it was uh, perfect in my opinion no mistakes by white and second because his opposition we are talking about one of the best positional players ever Tigran Petrosian in my opinion is one of the 
greatest positional minds in chess history. And this time we see him under this pressure, but we'll probably see great games from him as well. So I hope you enjoyed this analysis. I hope you could learn something. And I also want to see you guys in my next videos. Thank you.